So we are back with Mr. Bell, carrying on with the Quite Practical 10A. Mr. Bell. Hi, so now we've got our crude product of aspirin. But now this contains a lot of impurities just by the process of our experiment today. So we want to just end up with the pure aspirin product. And to do this, we're going to use a method of purification called recrystallization. Now the first step we're going to do is this is our crude product and we're going to place it in 25 centimetres cubed of ethanol. So I'm going to carefully place it in here. And this, it won't start to dissolve yet, because what we need to do next is actually heat the ethanol and our crude product mixture. And upon heating, everything that I'm placing in now will start to dissolve both the impurities and the aspirin itself. So again, making sure I get everything in. So why are you, why are you kind of being very, very careful to get as much of the um, product as possible here? Well, it's, it's a, because one of the common mistakes chemists do is leave a lot of the product behind in whatever filtration apparatus they're using. And it's these steps that um, accumulate over time and that end up having a very low yield. So you want to be very precise. You've got, you've got ages to do this. There's no point rushing it. So making sure I get every last drop, even the stuff on the spatula. And that should be good. Uh, so what are we going to be doing next with this uh, ethanol that you've got in the boiling tube then? So I've got the ethanol and the crude product mixture. Just give yeah. it a swirl so you can see it. What yep. we're going to do now is place it in a hot water bath. This has been going on uh, using the Bunsen burner to heat up. And at the moment, it's, oh, it's great. It's at 70, 79, 78 degrees Celsius. That's really important, Year 13, because ethanol boils at 78 degrees Celsius. So we don't want it to be higher than this temperature because the ethanol will start to boil off, which is not great because that's the solvent that we're using. We don't want it to run out. So I'm just stirring it now to make sure all of the crude product is to dissolve because remember we have those little clumps um, of our crude product which we don't want. We want to break them up as much as possible so that everything in here can dissolve. So a few steps that we are taking here to make sure that everything dissolves um, using hot solvent and also stirring to make sure that we surround uh, our reaction mixture with as much ethanol as possible. Just making sure all the clumps are broken up. Uh, Mr. Bell, how do you know when the crystals are fully dissolved then? What are you looking out for? What signs are you looking out for? So we should see no um, white precipitate at all. We should just see a colourless solution of the ethanol in essence and you should see it's starting to go a lot now. We've just got a little couple of clumps at the bottom which I'm trying to break up. And again it's really important because a lot of the impurities and a lot of the moisture so we've just added a lot of water, remember, will be trapped in these um, clumps. And if you want to have a good yield, a good pure yield, it's really important you break up as many of these clumps as possible. So we don't want these. And I think there's only a couple of clumps left now, so it's quite a quick process, this. And also, just as a little side note, recrystallization is quite a fine art because we need to find a solvent that can, at a high temperature, dissolve the product as well as the impurities. So you've been told today to use ethanol, but sometimes you might not be told. So at university, you're just asked to recrystallize your crude product. You might have to test between different types of solvents and sometimes even different combinations of solvents. So I think we're all good now. And what we're going to do, we're going to pour this ethanol mixture, this hot ethanol mixture, into some water. So what's the purpose of this step? The purpose of this step is to just first of all cool the reaction mixture down and also it's going to give it a platform to recrystallize some of those crystals. 
So what we're going to do now is just leave it until this cools down to room temperature. Now you can obviously use ice here, but the problem with using ice, you don't get nice big crystals. Using, uh, using nature and just naturally uh, going down to room temperature is much, much better because you get better, bigger crystals. So we're going to leave that now uh, until it's uh, at room temperature and then we'll come back to see the results.